Right. Welcome everybody to the Save Sci-Fi podcast. Um, this podcast is a special one. It's the anniversary podcast, or one year since we started doing these regularly. Um, and today's podcast is in memory of Susie Phillips Young. Susie was a major part of the Save Stargate Universe movement that started after the show was canceled. And it is the movement that has now reached up to 140,000 people. She was incredible influence on Save Sci-Fi. Without her, I never would have been inspired to start this page and movement. She was a friend, and she assisted me on many different occasions. And she has assisted the, start, the uh, science fiction community as a whole. She tried to put. She was one of the instrumental members of the Sci-Fi Congress, which, while it did not end up working out, it was a brilliant idea, and we owe her a lot as a community. So I'd like to have a moment of silence to remember her, and please keep her family in your memory, in your thoughts and prayers. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Amy. Hello. We have Stuart. Who is silent again. <laughs> Oops. And we have Michael. Hey, guys. And joining us at some point, maybe EJ. Not exactly sure. Having some uh, slight can... issues with Skype at the moment, which is sort of dropping EJ or dropping Michael, so hopefully we can get him well, back. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe Chief Engineer Mooney can help him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, this podcast is called Michael is Going to Hate This Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, the only thing I could possibly do on a podcast named after one of the other admins is bring him on the show. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> so, the tonight's podcast is our first anniversary. So what we're going to do is we're going to be, instead of covering sci-fi, we're going to cover fantasy. And since there Why is not? a massive moratorium on fantasy stuff on Save Sci-Fi, or Michael goes into nuclear meltdown mode, I figured, best place to do it. <laughs> so... So, kicking it off, we have the fan theory for Lord of the Rings. And the way it goes is that Gandalf always intended on taking the eagles to Mount Doom. And the way it works is, explain it in chronological order, Gandalf goes to Saruman looking to learn more about the ring that he's sort of discovered that Frodo has. Um... After that confrontation with Sauron, he was locked on the roof and couldn't sort of escape. Eventually, he used the eagles to escape. At which point, he travelled with the eagles up to where they nest in the mountains. Um, sort of... The mountains sort of near... the Sort of a bit north of Rivendell area. Um, he then talks to... The... Sorry, two seconds. Um... Yeah. He uses the eagles to escape, and which sparks the idea that he could use the eagles to get the ring to Mordor. When he escapes on the eagles, he doesn't go directly to Rivendell, 
to meet the Hobbits. He first goes to meet with the Eagles where the Eagles live, which we know from the Hobbit is in the northern part of the Misty Mountains on the eastern slopes. Gandalf and the Eagles discuss the plan for the Eagles to take Frodo and the Ring to Mordor, and the Eagles agree to do it. They would have the element of surprise and much greater numbers if they did up, end up having to fight the Nazgul. This plan is the only plan that has any reasonable chance of success. Gandalf and the Eagles agree that the plan should be um, kept very, very, very secret. If Sauron or Saruman hear about this plan, it's, it's totally done. It will never work, and their element of surprise is gone. Um, Gandalf can't risk losing that advantage, so no one tells. So he tells no one when he ri- arrives at Rivendell. Nobody can know of the plan until they reach the Eagles and are flying on their way to Mordor, because if they're captured, they could have the plan tortured out of them the same way that Gollum had the to- location of the ring tortured out of him. Um, when they leave Rivendell, they're a group of nine, not just Frodo. Sam and himself like he'd planned for. But that's fine, he thinks. There's plenty of eagles to carry them all. The more the merrier. Gandalf th- um, just has to get the Fellowship to the other side of the Misty Mountains and go north to meet the eagles where they live. Because meeting them anywhere else would mean a greater risk of being seen by the enemy. He can't take any chances for, this, for his plan being discovered in any way and is extremely careful because as far as he knows... The survival of Middle-earth rests on the secrecy and success of this plan. Now, what we do know is there's four main passes over the Misty Mountains. The High Pass, Redhorn Pass, Moria, the Gap of Rohan. Um, Being closest to the Eagles, the High Pass would have been ideal for Gandalf's plan, but it's also the place that um, the enemy would have been, the Sauron would have been watching the closest. Um, so he decides to take the second closest pass, which is Redhorn, which Saruman stops him from using. Um, he is then forced to go even further south to get across the mountains. Um, the next most next most northern route is... Uh, the, what's it EJ called? wants in. EJ wants in. Um, the next most more northern path is... Uh, sorry, just adding EJ... The next most northern pass is through Moria, which is one hell of a risk. Um, but it's still better than going all the way down to the very bottom of the mountain and having to go all the way back up in order to get to the Eagles. So, eventually, they go through Moria, they escape, and at the end, realising that no one except for him knows the plan when he's getting attacked by the Balrog and he falls... He says, fly you fools, hoping that at least one of the Fellowship would understand what he means. But they didn't. He falls and fights the Balrogs. Meanwhile, the Fellowship escapes from Moria and breaks up and scatters. So by the time Gandalf rejoins them, he has no idea where the location of the ring is. And thus, the eagle plan is done. So That's what happens when you keep secrets. Yeah, that's a theory based on the movie. I'm just looking for who wrote it. Let's see if I can find it. Um, Vulcan Death Grip was the one that came up with this, but it's posted on Tickled. Um, it's I think it's a very interesting idea. Um, but Fly You Fools was back then effectively meant run, flee. So I think it's a it little bit of a stretch. Yeah, it's a little bit of a stretch to take it that far, but it's it's definitely. Definitely a sort of a cool concept. And when it comes to Lord of the Rings, I think Lord of the Rings is one of those universes that is sort of the gr- a grandfather universe. It's one of those concepts that are l- almost everything that comes after is based off in one way or another. Um, yes, Lord of the Rings itself isn't the original fantasy universe and it borrows on a lot of other mythological universes to set itself up, but it's still one of the biggest and probably still one of the best fantasy universes out there. It's definitely, it's definitely right up there anyway. Um, well, yeah. we can only wait and see. Yeah, but seriously, the whole, let's walk into Mordor with seven people and take on, that, that's, 
Okay. It's like taking seven random people from the south and saying, you know what, we're going to take out the bread line. It's like, no, just just no. That was a, hor- that was a horrible accent. Shut up, you. <laughs> you do an Australian one, see if it's any better. <laughs> Hello, mate. Yeah, that's, that was catastrophic. <laughs> that, was, that was the point. <laughs> I can't do any other American accents myself, so. What was that, AJ? Let's put a shrimp on the barbie now. <laughs> well, firstly, we don't call them shrimp, we call them prawns. Secondly, they're the cockroaches of the ocean and I don't eat them. What? You don't eat shrimp? No. Shrimp are delicious, man. Good, more for me. It's why, it's why I can't keep kosher and why I'm a bad Jew. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and bacon, but yes. Mm. Bacon! Yeah. But bacon is bacon. You can sort of be that forgiven for like... bacon. As long as it's not Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Okay, which one do we want to go for? I don't know. We've got. There's so much fantasy stuff out there. It's really hard to sort of narrow it down to one or two things. Like, like we've got books, we've got um, TV shows. Yeah, the, well, TV shows. Merlin, the TV show Merlin. Michael, you remind me, you look like the dude that played Merlin to me. <laughs> I do, really. So. I actually got a really? photo with So yeah, you should, you, should, you should cosplay as Merlin. You know, I, like I said, I'm doing a convention at UMBC, at my, you know, my college, and, you know, in a few weeks, and I, yeah, I could use something to go as. <laughs> the only it's thing is that... Uh, what? Sorry, go it ahead. It would be hard to do for Merlin. The Merlin would be really easy. That Depends was two completely on... different opinions there. Let's hear the reasoning. <laughs> okay. Depends on which Merlin you're doing. If you're doing the Merlin from the TV show, yes. he's not that hard to wear. The clothes aren't that hard to get. Yeah, that's the one I mean. I don't look anything like that guy. What are you talking about, David? I just <laughs> went and checked and just not sure. I do not. I do not look like him. No, I told you you're going to hate this podcast, so I, I, I've got to deliver. I've been... I've been... <laughs> People have told me I look like Gale from the Hunger Games, and that I can kind of see, but I don't see Merlin <laughs> at all. <sighs> yeah, well, you get that. <sighs> so. Anyway. Anyway. So we've got Merlin, we've got Lost Girl, we've got... Um, yeah, so many. Mer- Supernatural. Mer- oh, Supernatural. Please tell me you guys are up to date on Supernatural. I have only seen the first, like, eight episodes of it. Of the whole show? Of the whole show. You, there's a lot of you for you to catch up on. I am well aware. I am well aware. It's been... I wow. started watching it, like, two years ago, and I never got back to it. Michael, it's official. You suck at life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. EJ, I can just boot you off this podcast. Actually, no, you can't, but I can boot you off this podcast. I can oh, have you boot him off the shit. podcast. It's still my page. <laughs> 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 He's getting Fine, territorial the with us. Ability, I will fight <laughs> hey, hey, hey! You came into this knowing I was going to hate this podcast, so I'm, you know, what's the point of me being on here if I don't give you any reactions? <laughs> I'm here for your guys' entertainment, basically. This <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah so really... we have to start taking it up a notch because we're not. I'm not entertained. Uh, so yeah, um. EJ, <laughs> okay, EJ, since you're not entertained, what fantasy <laughs> series do you want to talk about? Uh, I was thinking Star Wars. No. <laughs> okay, this is that big discussion between what is science fiction, what is fantasy, and what is Star Wars. Actually, it's its own class. Th- that, that could be an interesting little discussion to have since it's a fantasy podcast. We could talk about the, the difference between the two. Now, to me, fantasy and, and sci-fi are effectively the same thing. The big no. difference being that one of them uses technology, one of them uses magic. That's Very effectively much. the difference. So, when I was in college, I wrote multiple papers on this subject. So, yeah, let me know if you want me to chime in. Oh, this could be entertaining. EJ, do you have any of the papers on hand? Uh, I think that might be my Google Docs. I don't know. I wrote them when I was your age, so, yeah. Wow, that was a long time ago. Did they have Google Docs back then? <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, no, back, back, back then, we had a thing called dial-up internet. 
I and am well aware. Every I time, dial every, every, I am old enough to remember that. Every time you wanted to yeah, connect to the internet, are. all you heard was did it, did it, and remember, every time you pick up the phone, it deafens you, and then breaks the internet. I remember sitting in my basement, playing, trying to play Warcraft Two on my old Windows ninety five. Wow. What a leak dial. I remember I remember playing wow. Ducktales on Windows three point one. Windows three point one. Oh, we can talk about fantasy games too. Yeah. Oh, you know, I was going to go to that. Yeah, so Warcraft. Was... Warcraft series. Oh, yeah, that's Warcraft a... is the biggest, but... Warcraft's one... boring. There's... Skyrim's better. There's one that's Skyrim bigger than bo... sucks. Oh, there's one that's bigger than both of them, and that's the D&D series. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. The but the... looks the longest but... running. Dungeons and Dragons is a Lord of the Rings ripoff. <laughs> but Dungeons and Dragons wasn't really a video game for that long, was it? That's it's more of a... Tabletop. I mean, Roleplay. Yeah, okay. it's more of a tabletop. It I'm still talking more has video, video game spin-offs. I know, but those haven't been going for that long, relatively. I mean, I think Warcraft's been going on longer than tape, than any video game version of Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, well, the Elder Scrolls has been going on longer than them, so... Yeah. The Elder Scrolls wins. Wait, the Elder Scrolls is going on before Warcraft 1 came out? Yep. The Elder Scrolls has been going on fucking ages. Elder Scrolls have been around for a long, uh, long, long time. Really? I thought they were all MMO, MMORPGs. I did not realize anything that, was before uh, that. Elder, Elder, Scrolls, Elder Scrolls is not an MMORPG. Only um, only the most recent one is yeah. an MMO. Everything else all Warcraft before that was... Warcraft 1 wasn't an MMORPG. What? Warcraft 1 wasn't an MMORPG. Oh, I know. No, 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 Where? no. They, they were all RTS. I know, I know. I love. I, that's why I hated when they stopped making Warcraft games and switched to World of Warcraft. Yeah, that's why I refuse to play uh, World of Warcraft. Agreed, agreed. I I loved Warcraft two and three and Frozen Throne. Here's a question. One and two was is more what did it for me. Three, not so much. Is, Which one was? Is Ark Survival uh, evolved what? fantasy? Uh, no. 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 That's pretty awesome I, though. Hear the question. It's not fantasy. Why isn't it fantasy? Warcraft? Well, fact... <sighs> because uh, no, it's... not Warcraft. Okay. Keep up, AJ. Keep up. <laughs> because uh -huh. it's dealing with dinosaurs. And? It's, it's not fantasy. But fantasy it's got lots more... of different dinosaurs from different time periods. Fantasy is more magic. Fine. Agreed. No, well, actually, well, considering that was my fantasy... definition at the very beginning, fantasy is magic. Sci-fi is technology. <laughs> I mean, again, I don't think... Fantasy doesn't have to have magic, though. No, but it's... It's just the way that they sort of tell the story. Like, Game of Thrones is fantasy. And yet it has almost no magic in it whatsoever. Exactly, but, but yeah. I mean, there's plenty of shows that are fantasy. There's plenty of shows that are fantasy that don't have magic, but the lion's share of fantasy shows do. Like, there's plenty of yeah. sci-fi which don't rely necessarily on technology. Um, Agreed. But, there's still sci-fi. But the, the, the common core to 99% of them is either magic, or the equivalent of magic, or technology, or the equivalent thereof. Okay, well, going by the, the, like, the papers and research I did for those, those papers I wrote back in college... Um, basically, what I, the conclusion I came to was um, you have a, an overall um, genre called speculative fiction, yeah. of which, in which case, it, there's some departure from reality. It's not set in the world as we know it. Yeah. And then um, within those are subgenres of sci fi and fantasy. Plus, sci fi and fantasy can cross over a lot. Uh, so, for example, Star Wars. Uh, what would you call a wizard flying on his magic carpet fighting aliens in a Saturn orbit? Yeah. That is probably a sci-fi B-movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely a sci-fi channel movie. It's in the mix. Just make sure you send all credit to Save Sci-Fi. We do not... No, I... <laughs> no, no. Actually, no. We, I, don't want, I do not want... Arcade's name on that production. <laughs> we can put we can put Cowboy Aaron's on it though. No, no, veto, veto. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, put, just put Generate Studios on it. You know, I'm sorry. There's one thing missing from that movie. One thing missing from that movie, and that's sharks. Sharks, tornadoes, and earthquakes. And no, 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 the, 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 the new sci-fi movie, I've just come up with it, this is the best concept ever, 
Oh, no. Okay. We're in, we're in orbit of Saturn. There is a shark tornado earthquake in Saturn's rings. <sighs> chasing after... Nobility. No. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. The best... I, I, no. I, I, read out of, I read out of what it was chasing after. I was thinking, come on, think of a really bad sci-fi movie. Ran out of it. The first Wait, thing so that came you think Nobility is a bad sci-fi movie? No, wow. no, 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 no. I, I was saying I ran out of bad ideas, so I had to go to a good idea. You uh-huh. just didn't let me finish. That's my excuse that I'm sticking with it. <laughs> so so there's one one thing missing here, and that's that really the tornado, of course, can't happen in space. It would have to be that the uh, Great Red Spot is a shark tornado. <laughs> there you go. And nobility has to, has to uh, uh, well, I can't talk about that until it's released, so never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. So, how close is that release, by the way? A couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, about three weeks until Kamikaze, roughly. Nice. And uh, that's that's when we shall be, uh, well, we'll have our premiere. And uh, as far as the broad release, uh, stay tuned. Lots of good stuff are happening. Nice. Can't hey, wait. Jay, speaking of that, what, are you going to, am I going to get to uh, do any kind of special screening at UMBC in two weeks? <laughs> uh, oh, is that because you have that convention, right? Yes. Um, we have a full hour, and I don't really want to talk the entire time, so give me something. <laughs> give me anything. I, I could probably screen what we're going to screen at the panel, um, which is the first installment. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, what, uh, can, you, uh, can you give me exact dates? Yeah, we can talk about this afterwards. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can talk about it after. Talking about it live on the air in a podcast that's going to be saved forever, not necessarily the best idea when it falls through. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. It's a fantasy podcast, and we're talking about everything but fantasy. <laughs> hey, we started off in Lord of the Rings, and I read a thing, and it sounded awesome. Okay. And then it was going to be Stuart's turn to read his books, and then I realized it's Stuart, and so we moved on. <laughs> I'm not hating this podcast yet, so you're not doing a good job. Okay. Okay, Stuart, you're so up. I... Make him hate the podcast. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, let's talk about books. Yay! <sighs> <laughs> probably my favorite. Talk about books. Yeah, probably my favorite fantasy series that I still read is all the Del Toro Quest series by Emily Rotter. I've heard of those, but I've never read them. They are absolutely amazing. There I are. Found my paper. <laughs> there's what? three there's three different um series of them yeah uh the first one started off with the belt of del toro finding all the ge- um ju- um gems for it yep the second one um they weren't around finding pieces of a flute yeah it got a little weird okay <laughs> the third one is they then awaken dragons oh god they awakened dragons. They awakened dragons using the using the jewels from on the belt of Del Toro. So there's one and the dragon. flute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... For some reason, this is making me think of Reign of Fire. <laughs> I think that's where she got the idea from. And making me question how, in that movie, it ever reached the point where we didn't nuke the fucking dragon out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> we got nu- it's like, seriously, if America was like, hmm, look, a dragon, it's killing everything. I know, let's just... In every movie, it's like, problem solution to every problem in the world, according to America. Hit it with a nuke. Doesn't work? Hit it with a bigger a nuke. Solution. What? You have to admit, it's a very uh, effective solution. Oh, yeah, it's, it's well, effective. Well, if you want to destroy the whole world... Uh, so, yeah. Well, yeah, still. <laughs> we Let's wipe out the human race. Nah, well, it doesn't matter if you only nuke one specific location. And after all, there was only one male dragon. So, and it was in London. It's like, seriously, sacrifice a what couple of thousand London? people in London and the royal family, because it's the royal family and no one cares about them, and nuke the city with every nuke on the planet. It'll be a radioactive crater for the rest of time. No more dragons. Until you have creatures, <laughs> you know, mutate from that radiation, and then you'll be stuck with something else. Worse. The worst thing we could possibly get out of that is a Godzilla-sized super replicator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So there's Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we continue on with um Still with books, yes. Books, yeah. I found oh. my paper. Woo! Can I... <laughs> Yay. We'll get back to that in a second, AJ. Okay. As yeah, I... Um... I was gonna say, can I go on with something because you're talking about dragons? Yeah. Sure. Sure, why not? <laughs> dragon, uh, dragon. My All favorite dragon. author to read is Amanda Ta um Did you just Sorry. almost say Amanda Tapping? <laughs> yeah, Amanda <laughs> Tapping is not an author. Sorry. Uh, it... Anne McCaffrey. Oh my god, I love Anne McCaffrey, but not for her dragons. <laughs> like, I'll I'll mention something after you're done, Annie, because I don't want to interrupt you. Go. Okay. Away. Because um, it's actually part sci-fi, actually part fantasy. Um, part fantasy, because they've left Earth, gone to another planet, and has found um, fire fire dragons, fire nice. lizards. Um, anyway, they've mutated them into dragons, fire-breathing dragons, to fight the um, thing that comes off a planet and kills every eats everything that's not stone or metal. Well, it sucks to be anywhere near that thing. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem is, the thing is you impress the dragons, and if you don't impress them when they first start, you actually get killed. If you oh. get the center. How do you yeah. impress the dragon? Uh, give, give them sexy ladies? No. <laughs> that's a, that's the premise of every story. You give them a princess. Dragons <laughs> love princesses. No one knows why, they just do. That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, these ones you pre impress when they're when they've just left the egg, when they're hatchling. Okay. Still doesn't stop them from killing you if you aren't the one they want. <laughs> but yeah, they have a destined one, and if they don't get the one they want, they kill accidentally kill them, the children as they walk over them. Because yeah. you get bonded when you're about thirteen to fifteen, I think it is. Okay. And there's also the fire lizards are the they find them later and yeah let's go they sort of get very big and collective <laughs> would you enough. say michael <laughs> i guess so i mean Anne McCaffrey, for me her novels and everything um again i know all about all of her dragon novels and everything i've never actually read any of them i mean i've been meaning to however for her she is a fantastic author i do agree and what, she's probably written my favorite book series of all time, which is uh, the one that starts with Freedom's Landing, and it and it is science fiction, not fantasy. So yeah, um, Freedom's, Choice, Freedom's Challenge, Freedom. Yes, yeah. you've read them. I have all of them. Oh my god, you're like the first person I met who actually has read all those books. It's I think they would be a fantastic uh, set of movies. <laughs> yeah, let's steal everyone off Earth, throw them on random planets. And throw half mil half a bunch of military on one planet, and let them not try to take over, um, take try to take their planet back. Let's let's here. I will give a little bit more succinct of an explanation of these books, because that's <laughs> not really um, accurate. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. Well, okay. So basically, uh, Earth is invaded by this um, by this species. The Katini, I guess. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. Um, but uh, they are, of course, they are a race that serves a higher species sort of and like a basically. Sort of system. Huh? Sort of like a go old sort of system. I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're kind of like the, the Jaffa in a way. But they're not. Yeah, no, okay, they are. You're right, they are. Very, <laughs> that's very good. Okay, so, anyway. so, so, so she successfully ripped off. Stargate. Oh, no, 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 no. She successfully ripped off. No, 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 no. Stargate would have ripped them off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But no, um, I'm not done. Also, <laughs> oh, basically... you, you've, you've got more things that she ripped off. Do you want to list? <laughs> what? <laughs> so confused. Anyway, but no. Mm. So they use the humans as and other and other lesser species as test subjects, basically. Drop them on planets and see if they'll survive or not. And if they survive and start and start to thrive, they then go in and take over and con and control the planet. 
And this basically follows the story of one group, one settler group, and their um, and their fight against these uh, these overlords. And I love this series a lot. Because they're stupidly enough to throw one of their own on the planet. Yeah. Well, well, that's part of the story, though. And you know, <sighs> whatever. But it's a it's a good series, okay. No matter how much Amy seems to think it's ridiculous. No, no, no. I, I love the series. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I own all the books. I have to fight my sister for, for her to stop borrowing them off me. Yeah, the last <laughs> book, I actually don't own the third. I own the first and the second. Um, and then it's actually the, four. I know, I know. I I know that. Um, the fourth one, I borrowed from the library, like, when I was... So I'm, what, I'm 19 now. I think I was 10. And... I lost it, and then I yeah, found it in three. Like that. I fa- thank you, thank you. Uh, at least I am still young. I am proud to be a almost thirty-year-old, five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I found is. this book. I, I found this book three years ago. I found the book that I lost from the library nine years ago. I found it three years ago, and so I just kept it. <laughs> that works. Yeah. So I still need. So maybe I need to lose the third book as well. Because they actually never charged me for the fourth one because we told them that we were looking for it. We swore we returned it. So it, it just like kind of disappeared off my account. So maybe if I do that with the third one, I'll have a full set. <laughs> Seems legit. So, yeah, but no. I, I, I'll quickly mention a fantasy series just to keep this related. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, um, uh, the Ro- Rowan. Yeah, I think I have it here somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, the series. It was a good series, and it uh, it dealt with some drag. Didn't it deal with some dragons too? I think. Mm, maybe I haven't read it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time since I read it, but that was a good series too. Yeah. Speaking of book series, just while we're doing books, and then we'll get on to EJ's papers in a couple of minutes. Um, has anyone here read any of Matthew Riley's books? That'd be uh, books business. Name. Oh, I love Matthew Riley books. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what cool. are some of the names? Um, contest. Scarecrow. Scarecrow, Area 47, Ice Station, Scarecrow and the Bandit of Thieves. Um, specifically, the fantasy books I'm thinking of are Temple, Five, um, what was it? Five Ancient Warriors, Six Sacred Stones. No, Seven. Seven Ancient. Was it Seven Ancient Wonders, Six Sacred Stones, Five Mystic Warriors, if I remember correctly? Um. Those three books are a really good fantasy series. You want action and adventure? That's probably the best of the best. It's. I've actually got to meet him, though. Yeah, Matthew Riley's spectacular. I met him at Supernova. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. if you haven't read his books, you're missing out on someone who's probably one of the the best action writers around. Yeah, I'll have he, to look into those. I've never seen never I've been of told he's as, um, his writing is as bad as um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. He... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, there's only two books I've ever cried while reading, both of which are his. I cried reading Marley and Me. So, has so. anyone read um, read the um, books of Gareth uh, Nixon? The no, I can't pronounce the name of the thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, is they travel through the death dimension? Is all dealing with? Death Dimension in that. I've never heard of that one. No. Um. S A B R I E L. S A B R I E L. Yeah. Sabriel. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't. Across, a crossing, crossing the wall and that. Yeah, they traveling in the death dimension. They control. Control spirits and that some people, and the select ones that are more powerful than others. Sounds like a weird version of Heroes. <laughs> and this was long before Heroes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I know who's Garth Nix is. Yeah. Um, okay, well, EJ. What? You, you <laughs> said you've got your papers and you studied this thing. Yeah. And we sort of cut you off. You got any more oh. any more details you want to sort of list off about your papers? 
No, you told me to shut up, so I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I mean, I mean, we can just yeah, you know, forget about EJ then. You know, he's not exactly a critical part of this podcast. <laughs> Airlock. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, if you want me to go through it, I did. Um, it, it's funny. Um, I wrote the paper freshman year, and I found a version because I kept recycling the same paper, and so I found <laughs> I found a version of it that actually focused on uh, Frankenstein and whether or not. That was science fiction or fantasy, Ooh. and uh, the conclusion I came to was that it was actually the first science fiction because even though they don't explain it, they it, it's a doctor learning science and how he, that's how he's able to do it. Yeah. So it actually is science, science fiction. fiction. What, Frankenstein? Yeah. yeah, Frankenstein. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Oh, yes, definitely science fiction. Yeah, but at the time, I mean, it, it, it was At the was time, they didn't have... Science fiction they didn't have... Yeah. The term science fiction didn't exist until like the 1920s or 30s. Yeah. Huh? So, yeah, it, it, it was definitely ahead of its time. Uh, and But in every one of these papers, what I come down to, like I said earlier, is that speculative fiction is the actual genre because uh, you're speculating outside of our reality. Yeah. And then how that, whatever that departure from reality is, um, is what determines whether or not it's sci-fi or fantasy. And, and then, you, like I said earlier, you can have all, all forms in between. And fa- sci-fi is normally not necessarily science, but like nuts and bolts, you know, yeah. uh, versus it, it's something that we can understand either through science or, or just, you know, you, you know, something we can inevitably understand. Whereas magic, um, yeah. the departure from reality uh, in fantasy is magic, which is mystical. Yeah. And not something we can rationally understand. Yeah. So basically, fantasy is like women. We cannot understand it rationally. And uh, sci-fi is, is, is like men. You know, completely rational. That's yeah, what uh, no. If, <laughs> for, all, for all those who are listening, if you wish to send hate mail, please send it to the Nobility Facebook page. <laughs> oh, don't I'm be like, like that. Kidding. Leave I'm EJ alone. Kidding. I know, but it's fun to throw him under the bus for every once in a while. <laughs> well, everyone, I am joking. I am joking. I am having fun. I am. I have that kind of really bad sense of humor. I think everyone does. Yeah. After that. Oh, boy. Okay, now I'm going to get hate mail. No, <laughs> okay. I'll well, send the first hate mail. How about this? <laughs> Uh, when yeah, I was just, just your existence is hate mail enough, Michael. Yeah, I actually. Well, thank you. I'm honored. I actually wrote a short, well, a semi-short sort of outline for a fantasy universe when I was in high school. Just never got around to actually writing it, writing it. And the general premise was, um, I sort of ripped off a lot of the anime I was watching at the time. And by <laughs> ripped off, I mean pretty blatantly. Blatantly. <laughs> wasn't even trying. <laughs> What, um, is there some sort of fanfic somewhere that we don't know about? Oh, there it there is it is somewhere. It is literally written in a book, and I'm pretty sure that book is in my cupboard from when I was in high school. And the original short story was just one fight scene that I wrote in English because I was bored. And <laughs> um, from there, I sort of developed out a whole universe to explain why there was this fight. But the general premise is that there's um, these two parallel worlds ours and this fantasy world um when we first tested the h-bomb the detonation created a rift which sent a heap of people through to this fantasy world by accident without sort of realizing in the in our world we thought they were dead in but in this other world time sort of works a lot faster so thousands and thousands and thousands of years went past and instead of developing technology they developed magic um, because magic is a thing in this world. And they sort of became almost like the, the first race on this world, and after years and years and years and millennia, millennia, millions, uh, I can't remember if it was hundreds of thousands or millions of years, a long, ridiculously long period of time, they reached the point where they were so in tune with magic that they were effectively becoming ascended beings, and they are ascending into this magical force, um, at which point a war broke out between... Um, two rival sects, sort of like the Ori and the the Ancients. And the bleed-out for this war was the creation of elves and dwarves and humans and all these sort of different fantasy races were the result of 
these two ascended um, cultures trying to defeat each other. Inevitably, um, the ancients, the equivalent of the ancients, created a super weapon designed to wipe out the other side, known as um, originally known as the light, but it was later renamed the darkness after the atrocities that it committed. It became it, it was a, effectively a magical being that was not meant to gain sentience and was designed to obliterate opposing armies on its own. And what happened was it absorbed so many of the enemy's dark forces, the dark elves, the orcs, and all that sort of stuff, that it became corrupted itself and went dark side. And even the ascended beings themselves could no longer control and contain this thing. Um, it was... It sort of... This thing went rogue, decimated both armies, and it took the entire force of both sides to contain this thing and then seal it inside a bulk, seal it inside this mountain the problem is and the remaining handful of the original ascended type forces that were left ascended and left our space time except for one who used um, five the five amulets that were used to seal it seal the darkness to create a portal to back to our world and that's where the story picks up the main story actually tells the story of this guy's grandkid he senses a massive disturbance coming through from this other world which has been sort of abandoned so to speak by the ascended being by the ascended beings at this point and they're sort of running amok um so he goes back and the grandkid stumbles across the box that has the amulets in it in our world which then triggers him being sent back and the scattering of the amulets but he keeps one of them and so the story takes place of them going like through Power Ranger. Yeah, the, the, the story takes place following this story through that world as they try and collect all, recollect all the amulets and stop the darkness from escaping from its sealed prison. Um, but yeah, there's different forces. Some want the darkness to be released because they their religion states that it sort of has to happen. Um, so, yeah. anyway. Okay, we want to talk about TV shows. Um, I don't know. Stuart, what, what, what do we have? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, Supernatural. Let's cover Lost Supernatural. <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't seen Lost Girl, so that's boring. So let's watch... <laughs> I've seen some of, I have seen some of Lost Girl. And, and it's boring. <laughs> so no, let's talk not. about Supernatural. The girls I are attractive. I respect myself too much to watch Lost Girl. Yeah. You, wait, you say you respect yourself too much? To watch uh, Lost Girl. Yeah. We don't respect you that much. <laughs> that's okay. My okay, own ego will make up for EJ, your life. EJ, here's a question. Why do you say you respect yourself too much to watch Lost Girl? Yeah. Because it was a fun poke to make you make at you guys. I actually have no idea about Lost Girl. I think I saw half an episode, got bored, and shut it off. Yeah, <laughs> I, actually, I agree with EJ. That's better for my exposure to it. Yeah, it's like I, I saw half an episode, kind of went, this is stupid, off. And and that, that that's my entire exposure to Lost Girl. Um, assuming I'm not confusing it with another show, in which case I just have absolutely no idea what Lost Girl is. It's uh, one of the seductress kind of creature. Yeah, so. she's a succubus, right? Yes. Yeah, succubus. That's yeah, right. yeah. I saw about half an episode and said this is stupid and shut it off. Yeah, it's okay. It's not you... that bad. It's okay uh, then. Tell us yeah, why it's not that bad. You have have low thresholds, you know. Of, of it's quality. entertaining. <laughs> what? Well, how many times sure she gets it on? Well. What? How many I'm... times she gets it on with everyone? Yeah, yeah, that's that's entertaining to watch. <laughs> Literally, well, she's a succubus, so that's sort of a given. Uh, you can also get the same thing uh, from other sites on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm just gonna the thing leave is, that she's a alone. succubus, but she doesn't know what she is, or I think she's worked out what she is, but she doesn't know who she is, and she's been forced to pick. The light side or the dark side? Well, Bugsy so, is the leprechaun guy. <sighs> who turns out to be the one who knows all about her because mm -hmm. she he took her from her parents. Yep. Yeah. They have a body switch moment. <laughs> that was funny. Um, yeah, there's lots of different um, episodes. There's one human that's mixed amongst everything. 
who we nearly got to meet, but she didn't end up coming to uh, Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on to Supernatural, something that that was really good for five seasons. And I've heard it got really bad after that. And then just went to crap. <laughs> yeah, Why is it well, still it, going though? Well, no, because it, ha- it, it, it has a crap. huge it had fan base. One That's bad right. season, and then it hasn't gotten as good, but it's still good. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 no, the, 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 original, the original plan for Supernatural was five seasons, and that was going to be it. At the end of five seasons, <laughs> it was going to be done. And it really feels like that if you watch it and you just cut off the last 30 seconds or so of the last ep- of the end of season five, it, that's exactly how it feels. But since well, it then... it really did not end at five seasons. <laughs> yeah, it's on to its 11. Is it 11 now? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, they're halfway through season 11 and they're cleared to like 12 or 13 or something. I mean, that's that's kind of odd though. I mean, typically, even if a show is doing well, typically a show, if it was meant to last five seasons, maybe it will end up going for a sixth or a seventh. But to 11 or 12 or 13, that's kind yeah. of extreme. Are you sure it was supposed to end after five seasons? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it's all the slap thing. thing. So, so, so what happened is every season thereafter is effectively a self-contained new Sorry. bad guy introduced in episode one, new bad guy defeated at the end of the season. And every season that's follows it. that same sort of generic formula. New bad guy comes in, stupidly OP, they get their ass handed to them for about 90% of the season and then they hail Mary at, at the 11th hour. And that is effectively the formula they've had for the last six seasons. And it's worked. Yeah. It's been alright, but it hasn't been anywhere near as good as it was. Because there's no sort of... If, if they'd sort there's of no said, okay, effect. here's... That's the main story done. Let's We're going to need to come up with another secondary story. Let's plot this out for more than one season. Let's, let's have an overriding arc over the whole thing. The closest thing we've got to it was the Angel... Was the War of the Angels... <laughs> And oh, yeah, the tablets, that and that's about it. What are the angels and the what? The tablets, the demon tablets, and the angel oh, tablets. Oh yeah, the demon tablet, the angel tablet. Yeah. yeah. Spoilers. Oh. No, not really. You, you uh, can't be spoiled on a show that's eleven bloody years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying I, I haven't saying. watched the original Star Trek yet. Please don't spoil it for me. Oh, no. You had red shirts die. Okay. Don't tell me that Shatner beats the Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, honestly, he does Supernatural's it. done a pretty dang good job, clearly, as it is. I mean, it's doing ten times better, more successfully than most sci-fi shows. Yeah, um, but I think that's more because the stories themselves, like each individual episode hasn't been very good overall. It has a, it has a few good ones every now and again, but for the most part, they've been fairly average stories. The thing that keeps people coming back is the brothers, and Castiel, the character, and, and Mark Crowley. Shepard, and Mark and Crowley. And Crowley. Yeah. And Crowley. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Crowley. This is that the story at this point might not be fantastic, yeah. but the, the characters you've, we've invested so much in oh, the yeah. characters exactly. that they keep bringing us back. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the, we want to know what happens to to uh, Dean and yeah. once he gets the mark off him and all that shit. Yeah. Well, I was actually talking to one of the guys at my work the other day about Supernatural, and we're thinking, if we could finish the series, say, hypothetically, one of us had a chance to write the final sort of story arc, how would, kill by kill, how would you guys kill, go about it? kill everyone off. Kill everyone off? <laughs> we we just, just do a George R. R. Martin and everyone dies. Everyone dies. Everybody's I dead. Think, dead, so dead! I think it should totally be an illusion that they've been, like, in hell the entire series. <laughs> that would, and this that is, would not surprise me. That would be to cool. Be no, actually, yeah. could, could just, just work really quick. I mean, it, would piss, but... it would it would piss off all of the viewers, but <laughs> it would make so much sense. Oh. Just really quickly, mentioning George R. R. Martin made me think of Dragon Ball Z Abridged, where Vegeta's like, "That's it, everybody dies," nice. but with um, George R. R. Martin's face. I was gonna say, how does George R. R. Martin fit in with that? But. <laughs> <laughs> Bang yeah, he's actually Bang George R. R. Martin's actually coming to Balticon uh, nice. this year. He was at Supernova not... a couple of years ago. He signed on. Yeah, I'm not going to go see him because I don't give a crap. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. His line was gigantic. Yeah. Well, see, I, that's why I did the line on Friday. But everything signed in like 20 minutes. 
And he, he just looks at me and goes, these book sets are going to kill me. I said, yeah, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who wrote them. <laughs> Why well, is his book set going to kill him? Because uh, yeah. everyone wants all the books signed. Yeah. Anyway. No, it's not just one book. It's, it was all the books. Yeah, anyway, back to Supernatural. How would we finish the series? If I was I to add Supernatural... Okay, EJ, go. I, I would do it with this season, uh, or turn this season, uh, the arc that they've already started for this season, uh, make it a, a continuous thing over the next three seasons, since, uh, or two or three seasons, and um, I would end it with God and the darkness annihilating one another, and humans are finally left alone with a, um, a, a, a tenuous parody having been reached between the angels and the demons. Yeah, see, I would, I would um, go with one of the brothers dies, like like dead, dead, gone forever. They always die. They die every like they both die three times every season. I know they're, they're like Daniel Jackson. I understand. <laughs> so, 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 so the director pulls them off it. Yeah. So anyway, no, 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 like permanent, guaranteed death, no matter what, oblivion, death, level death. Like even their soul is obliterated. Yeah. Their soul is used up. One of them is used up to seal heaven and lock all of the angels in there permanently. The other one is used up to seal hell, locking everything in there permanently. And humans and monsters just go about doing their own things. Sort of. Sam and Dean are both well, gone. Souls of demons and... Oh, hey, what about purgatory? And also, what happens? It's a one. It's a one-way barrier, so things can still get in, just things can't get out. So ah, it effectively okay. resets the world to the way that it is now, if you know what I mean. Like out, sure? effectively to like our world. Yeah. Well, it basically, sets everything back to the start of the entire series, where yeah. you're just dealing with monsters and disturbed spirits. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it'd be really. A really um bad or a, a way to really piss the fans off to end it. Have Crowley and Castiel make out? <laughs> no, that's really already that no, no, that's happened at conventions. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, keep going. Um, make it so, and this is sort of a playoff of an old fan theory for Pokemon, is that none of it happened that, and that they were in a coma the whole time. Oh. <laughs> That, just, I, yeah. just, just I don't even think that would fans off. I don't even think that would make fans. That I don't think that would piss fans off. That would. It would probably <laughs> trigger the the apocalypse. <laughs> and the darkness go after everyone who is fans of the books in the series. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> that would piss off the fans. Oh, I, yeah. I I love that. This sort of internal meta of having its own story inside itself, sort of like Stargate with Wormhole Extreme. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what's what's worked so it worked really well for Stug and it's worked really well for Supernatural, the comedy side of it. Oh yeah, the 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 sort of the laughing at oneself as much as anything else really worked well for Supernatural. It really worked well for Stargate. Okay, anyway, most... Stuart, so it's time for the news really quickly though. Yep. All right, uh, I'm gonna start with some really funny news. Yep. Deadpool becomes an official Avenger. What? What? In the new comics that are being done, yeah. Deadpool officially becomes an Avenger, and there is a page on the comic that said, that has a Deadpool full security clearance card. Oh oh, wow! <laughs> How stupid do you have to be? <laughs> At the end of the Deadpool movie, I'd like to talk to you about the Avenger initiative. <laughs> 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 now, what, do you, what would he say, though, though? Come on, guys, what would he say? Ooh. Can I kill What, if, if he actually became an Avenger in, in, in the cinematic universe? Yeah. No, no, what, what, if, if Fury showed up and asked him if he would, it just said he oh, wanted to talk got, about I the Avenger perfect, initiative. Got perfect, got perfect what do you want do me to do, it. sit on people? No, 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 I've got the perfect way to do it is, like, just looks at the camera. I'm touching myself tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's the... And then the movie just ends. And that's it. That's the perfect way to do it. Actually, you know you could do that. You get the Deadpool trailer down, because he says that in the Deadpool trailer, the red one. Yeah. You get the 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 um the scene from Iron Man when Nick where Nick Fury is like, I want to talk to you about the Avenger initiative. And they just stitch it both together. Yeah. Oh, no to self, do that later. 
Yeah. Anyway, Stuart, news, keep going. Yep. Um. Um. So this this is an interesting one. Uh, Brian Cranston wants to play a Marvel villain. Mm-hmm. Ooh. More specifically, he wants to play Sinister. For those who don't know who that is, please enlighten us. Uh, Sinister is a villain in the X Men universe. Oh, okay. So, well, then that totally screws him out of being in the Avengers movies. Yeah, yeah. because X Men aren't in them. Yeah, but he's. Um, I think he'd actually be really cool to do it. He'd be good at playing a villain. I, I agree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of did with uh, with Breaking Bad. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting one from um from the Doctor Who area. Maisie Williams hits out at badly written female characters. Ooh. So yeah, um, there was an interview with Maisie, and she's and um, she, this is when she was young and looking at acting. She was, and she, I quote what she says: "I didn't realize when I was younger that women were written so badly." And she doesn't want to get into the typical oh blonde bombshell sort of role. Like she likes being. The edge, like she likes her role as Arya and her yeah. character in Doctor Who, but she doesn't want to do that staple role. Yeah. So that was a bit of an uh, interesting one. A bit of Battlefront news as well. Getting some more details of um, the game modes coming out. Yep. Uh, one is called Cargo. This is. It's sort of like Capture the Flag, but different. Okay. It is. <laughs> Um, you've basically got to go into the enemy team, um, enemy base, steal their cargo, and get it back to your base. Capture the flag. Yeah, but at the same time, you have your own cargo you have to defend. Capture, That's the, capture flag. the flag. Yeah, I know. It, it's it's basically capture the flag, but it's but you don't need to have your own cargo to capture cargo, basically. Still capture the flag. Yeah, I know. It's exactly it's capture their, the flag. It's their weird way of saying it. You know, what reminds you of um. And this is going old for like Aussie ki- people and kids. Uh, the emu thing. I can't remember what it was called, but there was like a bunch of teams, and you had a little pit with um little bean bags, and you just take them from the edit- from the other ones and defend your own. It was weird. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Not a clue. Okay. It makes no sense. The emu thing with a pit with bean bags, uh, and you take the I... <laughs> what? Anyway, we don't have time. We don't have time. We've only got two minutes left. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, apparently, Hulk is going to be in Ragnarok. Well, that's a rumor. They, have, they yeah, haven't this confirmed a, it, right? It's not, um, it's not confirmed, but it's coming out of Joe Blow, and this is out of um, New York Comic Con. Mm, okay. That this room is coming from, so... Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not sure... We because we don't know what the future for Hulk is, but be interesting if that was the case. Yeah. Because that, well, because that would then lead Hulk back into for um Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. And what? How about Infinity War's budget? A billion dollars for the two of them? Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. insane. But you think of what actors they have for it? How many actors uh, they're gonna yeah, have but, for it? Yeah, isn't isn't um what's his name? Um, oh God, I'm completely blanking on his name. You know, Iron Man's actor. Um, Robert, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Yes, Robert Downey Jr. Jeez, RDJ. He's supposed to get like. A huge portion of it, like what is it, forty percent of that? Yeah, it's crazy. Because it's That's his last thing. time as it's his last time as Iron Man. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. The RDJ is getting forty percent of the entire budget they have for cast. Something like that. It's but it's huge. Jesus Christ. So any more news, Stuart? Yeah. Uh, last little bit of Disney news. Uh, JJ Abrams Studio. Yep. Um, Disney are not going to Disney fire the movie. They're going to let them because you know how Fox foxed um, Fantastic Four and everyone hated yeah. it. Yeah. Disney are not going to get involved with the final cut of the movie. Oh, but thank the fuck. No still there, song though. and dancing Star Wars. No, no. <laughs> they're going to. I kind of want to see Darth Vader do a musical. <laughs> I just. Uh, it would be funny. It's just rambling in the background of like the Millennium Falcon. You just see the Mickey ears somewhere. <laughs> Well, technically, Mickey's head is in everything when it's Disney. <laughs> it, like, it would be surprised if you just see the ears somewhere. No, no, he'll be, he'll be part of the new Senate Mickey Congress. Mickey. He'll, there'll be just one floating <laughs> platform full of Mickey Mouse. Yeah, this is like, oh boy. I mean, E.T. showed up. Why can't Mickey Mouse? Exactly. exactly. Okay, anyway, guys, that's time for now. Um, we'll catch you in the after show. Me and Mike are going to talk about Continuum for a while.
Hey, well, I'm running away to go to college. Uh, yeah, so so well. we'll catch you guys later. Have fun. I okay. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.